All right, lesson for the Cornet Project class. I bring up a strange topic, for especially for a Bible languages class, but I do pastor uh, one of the Lord's churches, and I've had a lot of experiences there that are quite remarkable. Uh, the uh, distance or the remote relationship some of those who encroached the congregation held with reality. Uh, they had a strange relationship. But uh, this is about masonry, and it's a volatile topic. Ed Decker has written a lot of books about it. We have several of them in our library. I know because we had a couple of wannabe preachers there. One was touting himself a Calvinist, and he was a lousy lordshipper. He brought the law on himself. He would be telling other men a standard we should live by, and he was failing miserably. He'd tell us to reject passivity while he was embracing it. He'd say, you guys should take responsibility while he was rejecting responsibility and he said you guys should lead courageously while he was leaving cowardly and he said you guys should expect the greater reward and we were already enjoying the greater reward but uh, that's the irony of it of course uh, he had a father that one of the loud members of a failed deacon board uh, they were all masons but ed decker uh, the only point i had to make about uh, why i say he was wrong about masonry on this point was he said if you are a Christian, you have a problem. Well, we don't have a problem if we're the Christian, if we're the New Testament church, and there this is a social church, but we don't have the problem. Uh, he said, if your church is dying, if evangelism is a foreign word in your congregation, if there is discord within its ranks, if some small clique of people controls the board and the decisions, uh, the board were Masons. Virtually every one of them were Masons. Uh, he said we should check it out. The Masons may be in control and the Holy Spirit of God may be going to church down the street. Well, the Holy Spirit never abandoned uh, Landmark, for example. Jesus didn't fail to conduct in the churches, Revelation 2.1, especially since it was his church that he was concerned about. He's the shepherd of Landmark, we're his flock. He's the king, we're his subjects. He's the head, we're his body. He's the husband, we're, his, uh, we're the one espoused to him. So he has direct, and if you notice the apostles' doctrine in which we steadfastly continue, we learn the relationship of the head to the body. So this is the social church and the condition it was in when I came there. I was a convert to their faith. I went there to court a girl. That's what we called dating back then. But you see, I have Gideons up here, finance committee, Masons, business office, all these things. But a few weeks ago, I received this from the Gideons of Sherwood Jacksonville camp. So they meet every Sunday morning for prayer. And this particular Sunday morning, they prayed specifically for me and the church I pastor. Some of the best friends in the history of Landmark uh, were Masons. Now, the two of the most helpful friends were one went to the United Methodist Church in Jacksonville and another in a Methodist church in another part of the state. And then the other Masons I knew were all Baptist. And ironically, I was sitting in the Missionary Baptist Seminary in Little Rock, the oldest Bible school in the state of Arkansas. And someone mentioned Masons and someone said, be careful. And I chuckled, got a little laugh about it because I'm like, I'm in a seminary, a building, a school built by Masons. And you're, what would I be careful about? You mean the other kind? Uh like, be careful about the Gideons. Which ones? Are you talking about Gideons that had no character? Was, all, all I need to do is go by the actions. And I've never been, uh, we never had a group of Gideons like the giddy uppers, I call them. They got up, they got up and left because we were uh, initiated a building program by the last pastor. His vision became blurred. Information about the land that was acquired under him was. Uh, not yet disclosed a $1.3 million developmental cost liability, uh, $200,000 land debt remained and a $20,000 repair bill on just the building. So whatever that is, but the church doesn't have a problem. Jesus said, be occupied till he comes. We were, we were about saving souls. They were about saving face. Now they said that they said, you're making us look bad. Well, unless in 18 minutes, the business office that they always incriminated and the deacon board that the business office always warned about, uh, we asked for the plan from the deacon board to be pre presented to the church, unanimously approved, business office, bring an internal audit. Remember, I'm from the real world, so I don't know what it means to have all these feigned uh, uh, antics or whatever it was. A finance committee that didn't serve the interest of the church, that was uh, removed. We replaced it with men that had some character. 
we have a coven of women, I just say cow. Uh, they were always pretending they were having a cow, always making noise, activity, no progress. The congregation was deceived, fraud, and discarded, and that's what happened. They were very passive, effeminate males, very irresponsible. Uh, no kind of people I would ever work with and no kind of people that I ever had to work with and was never subject to. So when I began pastoring my wife's church, I still wasn't subject to it. And Landmark wasn't subject to it. And they found out very quickly that what they were doing against Landmark was fraudulent. And, of course, with the help of a lawyer who was a Mason, I had that strange. And then another attorney who was a pastor, uh, I always made sure that Landmark's uh, interests were served and with bankers that I knew and uh, presidents of different companies and managers of others uh, it's real easy to just we didn't even have to ignore these people that would take an effort we didn't even have to do that this board self-destructed even though they're masons they didn't father children they weren't known for being husbands they wouldn't help train up people in the church um, their children one of the loudest ones grandsons were in the crime report, so police report in our local community so often the judge recommended renaming his court. Another one, the child was incarcerated, which you should really weep for those children of men who are so preoccupied, their hearts weren't turned toward their children. Not one in those matters of family difficulty ever approached the church, ever came forward and appealed for help when we would, I tried to get, put. I couldn't even put names of social church members on the prayer list because it's all about saving face, not saving your soul. Recently, an 83-year-old called me, and she stepped out of her stupor. She was caught up in all the social church. And she said, what was I thinking? Well, now she's lost two of her sons. Uh, she has no relationship with any godly women. Uh, she has no relationship with the Lord's church. Again, all this was very dynamic and very dramatic. Uh, but again, uh, when you come over here, our outreach prevailed. We've engaged in uh, community outreach. Uh, almost uh, over 17,000 homes were reached by one of our pastors. We have several, three more pastors there, youngsters, I call them. Our business office, we removed that. We found people with uh, ethics. Uh, the building we were in over here that they didn't care for, uh, the land debt was cleared. The building was repaired. The We sold it for 700,000 and co-planted a congregation called St. Mark Baptist Church there in Jacksonville. And then the deacon board splintered. They had to self-destruct. We made them look bad, they said. Two of them said we made them look bad. Well, one wasn't a deacon. He was a Shriner, wore a little red hat. And he said, you're making them look, them look bad. Of course, he included himself. And then the loud deacon said, you're making us look bad, whatever that means. We were over here. We, we had nothing to do with that. We were over here eating the Lord's Supper, preaching the gospel, baptizing those who believe it. Men in the church are now heads of their households. Uh, the internal audit was requested by me uh, before I ever started pastoring. I told them I wouldn't even be part of something like that. I don't know what pastor would want to be involved in something knowingly where it would then bring reproach on Christ and on his testimony. So when they failed to bring it, that was easy. Just remove them. When they refused to bring their deacon's plan that was pre-approved unanimously by the church, I accepted their resignation. That was easy. Uh, again, it's when you're, we're serving someone like Christ, I don't know how we can be preoccupied with those who are preoccupied. Again, as I taught them, I was in a manufacturing company where they make product, and I told people, I don't make people make this product. I make the product. So I don't coerce uh, social church members. I don't confront covenant of women. I don't, um, I never even heard of Masons, or I worked, they were usually the people helping build a, a company here half an hour away, one 1,100 acre plant site. Some of the most instrument, uh, influential people there were Masons. The seminary, oldest one in the state of Arkansas, Bible school, Masons. I, I, I don't understand. It's like going to a hospital and someone said, watch out, there might be a doctor here. Or if you talk about doctors, be careful. I'd say, why? They said, well, one, abuse prescription medication. I still have no idea. Uh, Rotarians, Kiwanis, I don't even know what the symbols mean in their stuff. And I don't endorse uh, Masonry and their teachings, nor do, do I know a Mason to date who would ever ask me. It's only this deacon board of Masons who tried to force to, me to endorse, which was a very 
a passive, effeminate, kind of a queer thing in every way for me to be around men that were so insecure that they would say, we need your validation. I just told them I'd never heard of a Mason. And to date, I still haven't met a Mason that would say that. Now, whatever they were, were like these people who were Gideons. They weren't the ones I just read the letter from who prayed for us. But long story short is 1.3 million came. Uh, I had counseled a family in my wife's church. Uh, the gentleman worked with a trucking company. They then contacted us, and the Little Rock Air Force Base had construction work going on. They then came in eight different trucking uh, companies and filled that and took care of the 1.3 million at no charge. The leftover Masons and Twinkle Twinkle Little Stars, bringing a bad name to both Masons and Eastern Stars, because I've never heard of someone so socially challenged that they would initiate the assault because things were now being done correctly. They were over here complaining saying, this is not right, that's not right, they're up to something, watch out for those guys, whatever all that was. But the church was the one completely left out, but not by Christ and not by those of us who were being raised up. So this, uh, they blundered on the building. They It looked more like a dental plaza, it had no space for our multi-use or multi-use that we now have. So I go to real people that can help us. Uh, we sold it, the north five of the 10 acres with our first building that was nothing, didn't serve, served no interest of ours. We made a million seven, stayed there 14 months rent free because we have great relationships with the real community, the functioning community, the socially, uh, the one that had social uh, aptitude. Uh, now we've celebrated uh, debt free for 10 years, except I misspelled debt. And they have uh, more in the bank than the entire history of the 70 plus years combined if we were to add it all up. So long story short is um, I only disagreed when Ed Decker said, if you're a Christian, you have a problem. Uh, no, it's because we're the Lord's church. It's because they were first called Christians in Antioch. It's because we are a covenant community. We are those among whom and in whom Christ conducts here. He's never was over here. He had never had anything to do with an unscrupulous, unethical business office. He never had anything to do with a social face only um, pretentious, feigned deacon board. He never had anything to do with these who were promoting works uh, and never had anything to do with those who rejected responsibility. Again, all this had taken place and it was striking because they were competing at one time to make sure that the deacon board didn't blame the pastor. So they tried to figure out how to get it onto the congregation to get it off the pastor. And then when we actually uh, have a pastor who calls us to come back to the Lord's table, who calls us to go out and preach the gospel, baptize those who believe it, uh, engage in actual tangible, measurable outreach, and then to work together with another church to co-plant a church in the community and to get on while we're here. They then all converged, which again, it, it, I felt sorry for them. I really did because I was, um, I never had the perspective. Uh, my view of Christ and his church is scripted. Uh, whatever this is over here, it's self-destructive. It was very sad to see the families, a girl, 25 years prison sentence with a father who didn't have his heart turned toward her, but was preoccupied with somehow how does he save his face? Another man whose children, like I said, grandchildren were in and out of the police report instead of coming to the church and accepting uh, help by brethren and correcting his own son who wouldn't father his children. Now they went out to say, let's save face, let's do damage control. And of course, that's what's sad is the church that was here was by them deceived, defrauded, and discarded. And over here, the church was fed, like Jesus said, the green grass and still waters flow. We have an outreach. I teach the Bible and then reach the people. Yesterday I was at Heart Hospital, like pastors do, sitting with the families in very dire straits and concerned about their loved ones. So again, I didn't walk in and someone said, watch out, there may be doctors here or watch out, there may be Rotarians or watch out, there may be Kiwanis, watch out, there may be Gideons. Uh, that would be as silly as when someone told me, watch out or be careful because of Masons. Now I'm not faulting Ed Decker. It's just that my view of the of church, I have a high, the highest view of ecclesiology that's known in scripture because Jesus Christ purchased Landmark Missionary Baptist Church with his own blood. And at that price, it can't be over appraised and it can't be overserved, And I can't be overcommitted to that which has been purchased by the blood of Jesus Christ. And since that's true, 
And that's how much was paid for Landmark Baptist Church. That's the price. And he's worthy to be served, and they are, aren't even worthy to be ignored. So you have a blessed day. Enjoy this lesson.